class, uh, the better it will be. All right. If anybody wants to remind Marin to get on, I'm totally fine with that. All right. Um, but let's go ahead and knock out 25. All right. Graph each figure, then find the perimeter and the area of the figure. All right. So uh, these uh, questions are kind of annoying. All right. Because I'm reviewing distance formula with you, reviewing square roots, and uh, trying to show you how to calculate the uh, area of a um, triangle if you don't know what the height is. All right. But anyway, here we go. So is that plotted correctly? Let's just double check that. Negative two, negative two, negative two, three, and two, negative one. So that looks pretty good. All right. Now, um, I don't think it's very difficult. And I'm going to go ahead. Sorry, I'm going to put the letters here just to be sure. D, E, and F. All right. So over here, I don't think it's hard. We're just going to start with D, E. What is D, E? Help me, guys. What's D, E? Well, yeah, it is a line segment. I'm talking about the length of D, E. Say it again. Yeah, be loud and proud. All right. I don't remember. I don't care if you're wrong. All right. I care if you're trying. DE is five. Does anybody have any problems with that? Anybody? All right. Now, last year, uh, we talked about the Pythagorean theorem. And I would like everyone in here to know that distance is the distance formula is just the Pythagorean theorem. So, I'm going to put up here, I need to find DF. And I would like everybody to look at that and just say, well, I know that DF is the square root of 17. All right, everybody should be able to look at that and just without doing any work, just say it's the square root of 17. Can anybody else see that besides me? All right, so now let me show you how simple, simple, simple that is. Please look up on the board and I'll show you how simple that is. All right, I want everybody to be able to do that. I don't feel like doing the distance formula. All right, so I'm trying to show you the distance formula is just the Pythagorean theorem. So let's look up, I'm gonna blow up on it. All right, then what I want you to do is, I want you to remember what I said about the distance formula is just the Pythagorean theorem. So what I'm going to do now is do this. I'm gonna draw from here to here, and then I'm gonna draw from here to here. Now, what did I just create? Uh, what is that called? Definitely not a square. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, how about a nine, a right triangle? That is a right triangle. And we are interested in the hypotenuse. All right. This is the hypotenuse. All right. So now what I want you to be able to tell me is this length right here is one. And this length down here is what? Four. Now, can anybody or can everybody see how I got the score to 17? Right, because it's just what? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Does everybody see that now? Because we're going to do it again, all right? Anybody have any problems with that being the square root of 17? Because four squared plus one squared, 17, square root 17, correct? All right, so now right under DF, we're going to put what? What side are we missing? EF, thank you very much. All right, now remember the key is participating. All right, everybody now is gonna tell me that EF is the square root of, now take your graph paper that you did. All right, and now we're gonna draw this and we're gonna draw this. Square root of 32, square root of 32. brilliant, all right. Now, of course, if you're sitting there going, what are you talking about? How did you get 32? Just raise your hand. I don't wanna waste any time. Or I don't wanna waste any time. All right, so those of you who correctly said that's four and this is what? Four. four. Everybody good with that? 16 plus 16 today is 32, good. Now, we're not allowed to leave it as the square root of 32. So how do I break down the square root of 32? Eight times four, no. Someone else tell him. 
16 and what? 16 and two is much better. So EF, when we break that down, that becomes what? Four radical two. Now, again, we are reviewing radicals as we're going through. So if you're looking at me going, man, I, it was a blur last year. I have no idea. I forgot everything about square roots. Just tell me. Everybody's good with four radical two. All right. So now I would like the perimeter. Perimeter equals exactly what? Help me. Perimeter is, uh-oh. Say it, James. No. You're, how are we getting 18? How are we getting 16? Yeah. No. No, we're adding up the green, the perimeter of the green triangle. What's the perimeter of the green triangle? Ben, go ahead. Tell him. Um is not an answer. Very good. Five plus the square root of 17 plus four radical two. That's the perimeter. How did I get that? I just added up all the sides. All right. Can I really add the sides though? No. No, because the radicals can't be added together and the whole number can't be added together. All right. How's that? Everybody good? All right. Now let's talk about, uh, I'm going to go ahead and erase this just for this moment. I'm going to find the area. What's the problem with the area? I don't know a height. Lucas, tell me what the height is. Can you can you calculate or can you find a height anywhere on here? Now remember the height is always perpendicular to the base. The height is always perpendicular to the base. All right. Now again, this one's really kind of tricky. So what I want to do is I'd like everybody to highlight this and then try to explain to me why I highlighted that. Yes, I know that's vertical. So the height is going to be what? The height is, if, if that's a vertical, if I'm trying to draw something perpendicular, it's going to be what? Horizontal. Thank you. It's going to be horizontal. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this color so you can see it clearly. This right here now that I'm drawing is now the what? What's that called? That is definitely not the base. That is the what? That's the height, right? This ED is considered the what? Is considered the base. Now, how many bases does a triangle actually have? Three. And how many heights does it have? there's three bases there must be what there must be three heights that's why this is hard all right now why did i choose that one i chose that one because the height i can calculate real easily because it is what it's horizontal so i agree all right so what is ed again what did we say that was five now somebody tell me what the height is the height is equal to how much I think it's four. Do you agree? That was good. So calculating the area, area would equal, what's the formula for a triangle? One half. One half. So the base is what? And the height is? Does it really matter what you say? No. So the area is going to be what? 10 what? 10 square units. All right. And don't forget, just put a unit down here for me. All right, tuck your shirt in. Thank you for saying that. All right, 10 units. Uh, I'm sorry, 10 units squared is the area. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to blow this up a little bit and show you why that was more important, right? Drawing it to the vertical because we know the height's going to have to be horizontal. Now, let me show you what I mean here. I'm going to try with this right here. I'm going to try... See what I'm doing right here? I'm going to try to find the perpendicular, all right, to the other side. That looks like about perpendicular. Does everybody see that? But do I know it's perpendicular? 
I'm not 100% sure. Right, so on all these problems, they're either gonna have to give you the vertical or they're gonna have to give you the horizontal and you know to measure the height from that. Does that make sense? All right, hopefully that makes sense. All right, so with that, all right, I do think that's kind of tricky. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into 26 real quick. All right, so try to draw this out. I think it's easier if you draw it on the graph paper, that's why I gave it to you. All right, if you don't like the graph paper, do I really care? No, I don't care. It's just to me harder to see. All right, I think being good at math is being accurate, drawing good pictures so you can visualize things and you know you're correct, all right? So here we go. We're gonna plot negative three, negative three. And then three, two. And then three, negative three, which is actually, guess what? makes the problem what really simple all right really simple the other one was harder all right so let's draw this in all right now guys i'm expecting you guys now to talk more okay so i need the perimeter so off the side here i'm going to write kl equals jl equals and kj equals all right, now someone tell me, please, what is KL? Somebody said five. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock that out. Five. And if you disagree, now would be the time. All right, bless you. JL is how much, guys? Six. So now because we are brilliant, we know that KJ is the square root of what? Oh, yeah. Wow. Square root of 61. How do you get that? How do I get what? Um, the square root of 61. We use the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus okay. B squared equals C squared. Okay. And next time you next time you hop on, just say something to me because I, I don't know when you're getting on. All right. I don't see your okay. face up here right now. All right. That way I know you're here. Okay, got it. And again, I, I always try to start class like five or six minutes early as soon as we get out of chapel. So, all right, I like to get as much done as we can. So uh, I just start, all right? Okay, now, sorry, I was just... Okay. No, no, you don't have to be sorry. I'm just letting you know. I, I'm, I'm not complaining. I, I'm just trying to let you know. We, we get started as, as soon as chapel gets over and I put the Zoom like 15 or 20 minutes early just in case something happens. All right. So now everybody's going to tell me that the perimeter now is what? 11 plus. Thank you so much. 11 plus the square root of 61, and we're just going to call it units. All right. Now, Aiden, I'm sure you went home last night and listened to the video, so I'm sure you have not much to add, but what is your question? Oh, can I just get some graph paper? Yeah, I thought I said some on your desk. Maybe Will took it. Mr. Stroud. Here. Yeah, we learned that in the commandments, right? Oh, so, so much space. Shh, just go sit down. Don't talk to me, remember? <laughs> All right. Yeah, I don't really like that color. It's not so great. So let me fix it. Okay. Yes. Marin, what? Um, I know you already told me why, but I'm still confused how you got um radical 61 from the a squared plus b squared equals c squared. What's five squared? Um but it's oh I'm so just how asking do you know which question. one is uh, what's 25? five squared 25 what's six squared 36 what's 25 plus 36 61 there you go that's it this is the hypotenuse okay all right the hypotenuse is the one opposite the 90 degree side the 90 degree angle oh okay thank you all right now quickly Obviously, the area is, again, one half base times height. So obviously, the area is, help me, guys. Say it. Good. 15 what? 15 units squared. Very good. Now, how do we know it's 15 units squared? We know it's 15 units squared because the base and the height are already given. Now, how did I know the base and the height are already given? It's already given because... The base and height is attached to the right angle. 
All right, that's how I try to remind kids. If you look at the right angle, the right angle always has the base and the height. The right angle always has the base and the height. All right, is everybody good with that? All right, now let's knock out 27, all right? And then we'll go on to something else. All right, so let's everyone try to knock this out real quick. Negative one, one, uh, three, four. Six zero two negative three. So what does this look like? A square. Right, I think it looks like a square. All right, now we're gonna review how I know it's a square first and foremost. All right. Because do the sides being equal guarantee that it's a square? No. Definitely not. Because it could be, what's the other shape? Uh, no, it could be a rhombus. A rhombus is the figure that has equal sides, all right, but doesn't have equal angles, all right? So in this case, I think it's a square, but in order to determine whether or not it's a square, what are the sides called in relationship to each other? They are called perpendicular, all right? So this is another really important problem. So it's a lot of reviews. All right, last year we learned lines are perpendicular if their slopes are what? Slopes are, that's parallel, right? So these two lines are parallel if the slopes are equal. And then these two lines would be parallel if the slopes are equal. But how do I know if they're perpendicular? Come on, someone. Close. You say they are negative reciprocals if the slopes are opposite signs and reciprocals of each other. All right. So what I'm going to do is right up here, I'm going to put M. What does M stand for? Slope. Then I'm going to put QR down here. All right, and then I'm going to do the slope of PQ. All right, hopefully they're opposite reciprocals of each other. All right, now remember slope was rise over run or change in Y over the change in X. All right, so from Q to R, I went down how many? Four. All right, I'm gonna to try to find a good color. I went down four, and then I went over how many? Whoa, 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 three. So the slope of QR is negative four thirds. What do I want the slope of PQ to be? Stop, what do I want the slope of PQ to be? Say it, three fourths, you are amazing, three fourths. All right, if the slope of PQ is three fourths, then they are perpendicular to each other, which then will be hopefully a square because it kind of looks like a square. So from P to Q, how do I get from P to Q? I go what? Up what? And to the right? Yay. So are they perpendicular? Yes, they are perpendicular. All right. Now, what is QR? Someone tell me the length of QR. I'm sorry, QP. What's the length of QP? Again, we're using a Pythagorean theorem, guys. Why five, do you think? Because the hypotenuse is square root of 25. But tell us, come on. So the uh, horizontal line uh -huh. is 4. Right. And then the vertical one is 3. Even though you said that completely backwards. The vertical is 4 and the horizontal is 3, right? Yeah. 
Okay, there you have it. So we know now that QP is equal to the square root of 25, which is obviously what? Five. All right. I'm still confused how you're getting that. Marin, it's just these two numbers right here, three and four. And okay, this is the- but, but why did you square it and put it in a square root? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay, well then why is it in a square root? Because Marin, if we do four squared plus three squared, we get C squared. 16 plus nine equals C squared. 25 equals C squared. What do I do? Oh, you square root, okay. Right, or you can just do the distance formula. The distance formula is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Okay, and then I have one more question. Why, um, why do you use the numbers four and three and not like, um, not, wait, never mind, I get it, I get it now, thank you. <laughs> not what? I was going to, I looked at the other ones and they were also three and four, so. Okay, so what's the length of, um, what's the length of PQ? Yes, thank you very much. So everybody's looking at PQ saying, I think it's what? I think it's five. Now we're looking at PS and we're looking at SR. It looks to me like they're what? Five. five. Now, if you're not sure, again, for those of you guys who are having trouble, you're just making the right triangle. That's four, uh-oh. That's four and that's three. Same thing, five. What's SR probably? Five. All right, so can we confirm that is a square? Yes, it is a square. And what's the perimeter? 20. And what is the area? What's the area? 25 units squared. Thank you very much. All right, so I'm going to let you try 28. All right, I, I want you to do a good job on 28, please. All right, not this moment. Not this moment. All right. So... Now, I ask you to kind of work through these, all right, yesterday, and I want to answer specific questions if anybody has something specific. Thank you, Elise. All right, let's look at 33. Thank you, kiddo. All right, so on 33, it says, the diameter of the most popular brand of flying disc used in disc golf measures between eight and 10 inches. Find the range of possible circumferences. Again, I'm trying to make sure you guys hear me. Do I care about rounding right now? No. no. All right, I don't care about rounding. All right, so if the smallest possible uh, diameter is eight, what would the circumference of that disc be? Eight pi. Eight pi. And if it's 10, the circumference would be 10 pi. So the range, all right, of possible circumferences means that it's somewhere between 8 pi and what? It's somewhere between 8 pi and 10 pi. That's all they're asking. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, I don't care about multiplying it out. All right, leave the exact terms. This is the range. Now, sometimes, remember, people think range is always the difference between the high and low. That's not what they're talking about, right? They're saying the circumference can fall between 8 pi and 10 pi. Well, that's you. Bless you, bless you. All right, so now someone else. Can you do 35? All right, let's look at 35. The length of the rectangle is half the width. The area is 25. All right, so once again, in my opinion, the best thing to do, all right, is 
I used to like to just label things the length and width. The length is being related to the width. So I don't know what the width is. So I know the length is half that. So the length would be one half X. And the area is just multiplying them together. So one half X times X must equal 25. One half X squared equals 25. So X squared equals 50. If X squared equals 50, that means X was equal to five, five radical two, brilliant. And if X is five radical two, two. then the width would be five radical two. And the length would be half of that. So you could say five over two radical two. All right. Is that good, Marin? Yes, thank you. Yes, Olivia. Let's look at 37. Okay, so remember everybody should be good with area of a circle is equal to pi r squared equals 32 pi. Do you agree with that? So dividing by pi gives me r squared equals 32. Agreed? And so the square root of 32, we already did this problem. Square root of 32, everybody should remember is? Which is four radical two units. And I'm not sure. <clears throat> Wait a minute. Again here, thank you, Harrison. It says, find the perimeter or the circumference of each figure. All right, so I got to go back. All right, I didn't read the directions. Is everybody with me? All right, so let's go back to 35. It wants to know the perimeter of that rectangle. All right, so remember the perimeter is just adding the length and width and multiplying by two, right? Now let's practice this. So the perimeter is equal to, now you have five radical two plus five over two radical two, and then I'm gonna multiply it by what? Multiply by two. Everybody okay with that? For perimeter, add the length and width and multiply by two. Now to me, in this case, it would be easier just to multiply by two first, right? So that would be 10 radical two plus five radical two. So the perimeter was 15 radical two, and I, I forgot to put the units, so that'd be meters. Yes, ma'am. Um, okay, no, that's a good question, you ready? So I can write it like this also. Right, so, Keep in mind, this whole thing is a number, right? So I divide by two, all right? So again, this is how uh, you can write it or you can write it like this. All right, thank you. All right, here we go. Now I just did the perimeter of that. Now we found the radius, right? So we wanna find the circumference. Does everybody agree with that? So the circumference is two pi r, so if I'm not mistaken, two times the radius would be what? Eight radical two, right? And then you multiply that by pi, and then that would be units. All right, that's what they were asking. All right, I'm good with that. Olivia, did I? Did, yes. That was, that was good. All right, someone else now who thought about something last night. Tell me. Yes, 41. Find the perimeter in inches and area. All right. So again, I'm trying to convince you that fractions are better. So 0.75 is obviously what? Three fourths. Now does everybody understand three fourths times four is the perimeter. So hopefully you think that's easier. So the perimeter is just what? Three yards, right? And now I like to do the area is just three fourths times three fourths, which is nine sixteenths yards squared. Much easier to deal with fractions than to deal with decimals, especially if you're not using a calculator. 
All right, I'm happy with that. Yes, sir. Let's look at 39. A rectangle's length is twice its width. So again, I, I like to write length, width. The length is twice the width. So that means the width is X, the length is two X. Do you agree with that? And so area of a rectangle is just length times width. So everybody good? So if I do X times two X, that's gonna equal 48. Two X squared equals 48. X squared equals 24. So X equals two radical six, beautiful. All right, I forgot, we're supposed to find the what? Perimeter, right? So there are four sides to that square, agreed? So my perimeter then would equal what? Eight radical six, what? Well, in this case, they give you the units. It's kind of annoying. They should be consistent. Either give you a unit or don't. All right. We know the unit this time is inch. All right. How's that? Anybody else have any questions? I don't think it's too bad. All right. A lot of review of algebra. Hopefully that was good for you. All right. Again, I really want everybody to know the distance formula is just the what? Pythagorean yes, it's just the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. C is always the distance that you're looking for. C is always the distance you're looking for. All right. Now, um, I ask you to work on the odds. Today, we're going to do the evens. Now, um, I really want you to do 28 on your own. All right. But I'm, I'm up for some of you guys who said, well, I was kind of looking through and I'm having trouble with this one. All right. Anybody else want me to do a problem? If not, I'm just going to let you finish up today on your own. Good. Let's look at 40. Thank you very much. Let's knock out 40 together. All right. So again, I like this problem a lot. All right. Again, this is good mental math exercise. So I need everybody's attention on mental math. Do I like decimals? No, it's much easier to work with fractions. Much easier. So instead of saying 2.5, I'm going to call that what? 5 over 2. And then the other leg of the triangle would also be what? Five over two. All right. So now we're going to do Pythagorean theorem. So we know that five over two squared plus five over two squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. Now, of course, everybody can tell me what's five over two squared. Thank you. 25 over 4 plus 25 over 4 equals C squared. What's 25 plus 25? 50. Please do not simplify the fraction because we're taking the square root, right? And it's important not to have a square root in the denominator. So what's the square root of 4? 2. Now, how do I break 50 down? Which is? Yeah, you don't have to tell you don't have to tell me how you broke it down. I want you to just tell me what the answer is. All right, you don't have to tell me 50 is 25 times 2 cuz I know that. All right, I'm more impressed if you can just tell me what the radical is. Now, if you're having trouble with the radical, I don't mind reviewing because it's been a long summer. All right. So, does everybody agree this side length is 5 radical 2 over 2? So now I want everybody to be able to tell me that perimeter is five plus five radical two over two centimeters. Baron, how are you doing on that? Um, this might be a dumb question, but where did you get the five? From five. Five plus over five. two plus five over two is what? Oh. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Now I think they wanted the area too, right? Yeah. Yep. So let's do area. Area, remember, it's a triangle. So we have to do one half times five over two times five over two, which is obviously now what? 25 over what again? Come on. Come on. 25 over what? Eight. Eight. Thank you. 
Yeah, sometimes two times two is six, right, Kate Mitchell? But we'll call it eight today. Okay, all right. And then it's what units? Centimeters squared because we're dealing with the area. Yes, good. Okay, so I'm gonna look at the picture. I'm doing the perimeter, right? There's only one of these. Is that what you're asking me? And there's two of these, right? Okay, come on, guys. I, I don't. I I don't think anything else is too difficult. Last chance to ask me a question before I'm expecting you to turn all this in tomorrow. All right, every bit of it. Yes. Are we doing just twelve? You're finishing this assignment. All right. All right. Whatever the assignment was, the assignment was eleven through forty-two. All right, I'm so excited. Tomorrow I get your first paper I'm collecting. All right, it's been so long since I've collected a piece of paper. I go back to you. That's amazing. No, my Mr. Shroff. Right. Yes. Yesterday I did it on the iPad, but like it's not working. So can I do it on paper today and then just turn both like parts of it in? Yeah, I, I because you're distance learning, you, you're special. All right. So I'm just confident in you that you're doing all the work. All right. So Thanks. when are you coming back? Do you know? Uh, next Monday. Perfect. So again, just keep asking me questions if you don't know something. All right. And you can do it on paper, but I'm not taking things electronically. Oh, okay. All right. You can just, when, when we get on Zoom, I'll just say, hold up your paper and you can just show me. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. Does that sound good? Yeah, that sounds All right. good. I really prefer paper. All right, you guys need to do that. Yeah, I prefer all right. it too. So with that being said, all right, um, we can go ahead and end it and you guys have the last few minutes to finish up. All right. Thank you. Hey, Marin, have a great day, okay? You too, bye. Toodles, see you on Monday. <laughs> yeah.